In this Grasshopper example file, I want to show you how we can simulate a simple curve bending in Grasshopper. Uh, as you can see here, I can change the different parameters which is related to the bending. Uh, also, I can say that are these uh, curves touching each other or not. So you can see here, it's actually in the opening and the clothing of the curve. Uh, also, we have some parameters I'm going to explain. Uh, I can increase or decrease the number of curves we have here. We're also going to talk about some details we can control. Uh, for example, the extension you can see here we can control. Uh, another extension we can control here. And also an offset which is going to be the thickness at the bottom of the curves. Uh, finally, we can just uh, locate the parts or uh, whatever we want and also control the thickness and uh, have the details. So let's take a look at this example file and the steps we have to take to make the curve bending in Grasshopper. Okay, first of all, let me just turn off everything and explain what we want to do. Uh, the first part is to simulate uh, the, let me just go to the top view and explain what we want to do to make the simulation. Uh, first, what we want to do here is to define two uh, rectangles and rotate them uh, as they are touching each other. Uh, this is really easy. What you can do here is to simply uh, draw a rectangle, which you can control the X and the Y. Uh, then what we want to do is to explode and pick up this uh, vertex here and rotate this uh, from this point. Let me just explain how we're going to define the rotation. So what we want to do is to rotate this rectangle on this point and also the axis Z to rotate it up. Okay, uh, but the problem is how much can we rotate it and why does we have uh, why do we have a number slider between 0 and 1, which is going to explain uh, the touching part, which is going to be a mirror. So how can we solve this? Uh, assume that we have two parts here, and we want to rotate them. This is the two curves we have, okay? They are inside this body. And they're going to rotate uh, somehow and intersect at this point, okay? So I'm going to draw this, and this is going to be the rotation. Sorry, this is going to also be at this point. And how can we find the maximum angle uh, we can rotate this? Uh, to find this, this is going to be, uh, if the distance between the two parts is going to be d, obviously this is going to be d divided by 2, right? And for this one, uh, if we have this as the length and this as the width, this is also going to be the length, right? So we're just using a simple component here, which you can uh, find it in the math section. Uh, in the trigonometry, you can see there are different tools. I'm going to use this right trigonometry to find the results. So what is going to be this R? is going to be this one. And obviously you can see that we're going to give the number slider we have here to the R. Uh, the next thing is the P, which we defined here. And remember that's going to be divided by two. So it's divided by two. And now what we can get here is the alpha. But remember here, uh, the alpha is going to be the maximum degree we can rotate this is going to be 90 degrees minus this. But because this is in radians, uh, I'm going to use a tool called degrees. You give the radians inside and you get the degrees here. And then we say 90 degrees minus this. Why does, it, uh, why does uh, this is going to be 90 degrees? Because when you rotate this part, the maximum rotation you can get here is 90 degrees minus the alpha. This is going to be the part we can maximum rotation, okay? So it's going to be 90 degrees minus this based on degrees, and then we can give it a multiplication between zero and one. So near one is going to be uh, contact, 
and a zero is going to give us somehow without any rotation. Okay, that's uh, how you rotate it around the axis, the center point, as I've explained. And then a mirror is going to be used. The mirror is going to be in YZ plane, okay? Uh, the plane is going to be at the center of this distance. So what we want to do is to move this point based on the X and by half of it, right? And then we have a YZ and then we have the mirror. That's how we can make the first part, which is the two rectangles. So this is going to be the degrees of rotation. This is going to be the length they have from each other. And this is going to be the height and the widths. Okay, now that we have these two parts, let's just make this smaller a little bit. To do that, what we have to do is to find this part, which is going to be the parts between them. Assume that this is the red part, okay? And then orient this one, which is also the first rectangle, from this plane into here, okay? So if we orient that, this is going to be the second part. And then we will have this small part here. Again, when we orient this, so orient this here, again, orient this here. This is going to be the third part. And so on. So that is going to help us to make the simulation. Uh, that is the preparing for a loop. Uh, to make the loop, you have to first group them all together. As you can see here, I have loft these two parts. You can do that by selecting this edge and this edge, exploding and selecting, and connecting to each other with a loft. And then I have just grouped them together to uh, make this uh, rectangle and the connection as a group of one object. Okay, now that we have this, uh, we make the anomaly loop. So we're going to make the loop here. Uh, and you know that when you have the anomaly plugin, uh, you can make a fast or classic. I have to make the fast because I want to see the final results really fast. Uh, I give it a loop of start and end and connection of the top. And what we're going to do is to only work with the groups. So the loop is going to be ungroup the sections. So we have the rectangle and the connection. Then we have to select them together, uh, make a plane at the corner, right? Then also we're going to make another plane uh, at this corner, which is going to be aligned. Because there are some problems here, what you have to do here is to explode the connection, make a plane at the corner. But as you can see here, the plane is not right. So what you have to do is to flip it the X and the Y direction, and you will have the right plane. Because when we okay, enable this one, when we have the X direction here, the X direction has to be also here. And when we have the Y direction here, the Y direction has to also be here. Uh, that's it. We orient it. And as you can see, we have made the second one. Again, we group it and turn it back to the loop. Now the loop is going to work. So if I just turn on here and remember that you have to also right click and record the data. I can define how many steps I'm going to take. So here you can see that we're going to make this as how much we want. Remember that you can play with this opening and closing. And that's going to be the final results. After we make the ungroup, which we have two parts, uh, as you can see, here we have groups of two. Uh, we're going to select uh, the two parts, which obviously we just connect the surface to this. And we have the second one, which is going to be the connections. Uh, so what we want to do is to work with the parts. And as you can see here, we can uh, connect the surface first to them. Another thing is that we deconstruct them and pick up these two parts. Let me just explain here. this one and uh, also this one. So what we want to do is to extend this part and also extend this part. 
right? So for example, for this one, what you want to do is to make a perpendicular frame here to make the y direction and then multiply it with a number slider and extrude it. So it's going to be obviously extrusion here. Okay, the next one is a little bit complicated. Okay, before we go for the last part, which is going to be the extension at the uh, end, uh, let's go uh, and talk about the loft we have here and how we can make that. Uh, to make that, when we have the connections here, we're going to explode them. So what we want to do is to, for the making the offset or the loft, uh, you just have to select all the uh, bottom parts of the curves and the connections, which I have made here. Uh, then I have extended that from the start and the end. As you can see here, this is going to be the start. This is going to be the end. And all, the, all of them are going to be joined together to make this curve. And finally, it's going to be an offset and a loft. That's the bottom part of the connection. Uh, the upper part is going to be also important because what we want to do here is to extrude this part in this length. But the problem here is that if you extrude it like the similar part here, uh, it will not have the complete result. And if I say extrude curve, select the curve I want to extrude and go to direction and say in this direction, as you can see here, the problem here is that there is going to be a complete error here. So what I have found, it's going to be uh, using the sweep command. So let's just go to here. Use the sweep command to make the complete results. Uh, what you have to do is to make the rail. The rail is going to be this part. This section is going to be this part. It means that we want to reach here as the last section and the start of the section is also going to be this one. Right? So if I put these two in one curve so you understand it better, these two are going to be the start and the end section and this is going to be the rail. That is going to give us the final results, which is going to be a sweep. And, and now we have all of them, turn off everything, all of them in these surfaces, as you can see here, the curves, the start and the end, and the offset. So all we have to do is to put them into one curve and then make a region union. If I pick that region union, you can see that we have the final results. And now we can just simply orient that in a direction. The orientation part is to just put that uh, wherever you want in an XZ plane. For example, if you want to put it in XZ plane, you can just give it here and put it wherever you want. If you want to change the plane, simply give another plane here. Maybe you want to put it in a XY plane, whatever. And then the orientation is going to make that uh, in the last part. So at the end, what we want to do is to just extrude that, make a surface from it, extrude it in the normal direction of the plane, whatever plane you have, and we will have the extrusion if you want to uh, visualize the final results. So that's the example file of the curve bending. I hope this explanation has been useful. If you have any questions about this, just ask below. Uh, and thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Remember that you can download these uh, example files all from our website, parametrichouse.com. And remember to subscribe to our channel, like this video, share it with your friends, and let me know in the comments uh, if any additional uh, examples you need so we can record the tutorial. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.